a hot, sweaty Calcutta summer day in 1868. The sun is scorching. The native constructional workers are trying to build a small culvert under the supervision of a British engineer. But every time they build a culvert, it breaks. The angry, frustrated engineer cannot explain. The workers do not understand English. Standing under a nearby tree is a 14-year-old shabbily dressed boy. He keenly watches the construction effort. After some time, he comes close to the supervisor and asks if he can try explaining the job to the workers. Surprisingly, the little kid speaks English. The supervisor is overjoyed when with his help the culvert is built in just one more try. Later this supervisor, Mr. Maccabe, becomes the chief engineer of Calcutta Corporation. And this little boy grows up to be one of the best engineers that modern India would ever see. Sir Rajendranath Mukherjee. Born in a small village, Barashat, near Calcutta, on June 23, 1854, Rajan has a difficult childhood. He loses his father when he is only six years old. His ill health forces his mother to send him to his maternal uncle's house in Agra. Rajan is mesmerized by the beauty of the Taj Mahal. For hours, he sits near the Taj Mahal and wonders how this exquisite structure is built. The precision of engineering attracts the little boy immensely. He prays to God that he can become an engineer and build landmark structures during his life. Who knew that day that his dream will come true? One day, this little boy will design and construct the Victoria Memorial, the proud signature of the city, Calcutta. Rajan studies engineering at present-day Bengal Engineering and Science University, Shippur, then located at Presidency College, Calcutta. He's offered a leg surveyor job after his graduation, but Rajan declines it. This is a horrible drought time in Bengal. Unpredictable rain and extreme heat are making everyday life miserable. Lakes are drying up. Rajan thinks hard. He reads about the recent inventions around groundwater pumping systems. In 1870, UK professor Osborne Reynolds develops an original design of centrifugal pump which may be used for pumping underground water. Rajin is deeply attracted. He pleads to the chief engineer of Calcutta Corporation, Mr. W. B. Maccabe, about his vision. The chief engineer knows Rajan's engineering ability but is surprised to see such innovation and entrepreneurship among a native Indian. He awards him the contract of laying Palta Water Works, the first of such water tank projects in India. Rajin is later awarded contracts on similar jobs at Agra, Allahabad, Benares and other cities. Very soon, Rajan comes in contact with Sir Thomas Martin and in 1890, with a loan capital of 1,000 rupees, he forms a partnership, Martin and Company. In early 1890, the repeated dry seasons not only affect Bengal, but grab the fate of the entire Western India. Mukherjee notices the growing population of Calcutta and realizes the reluctance of the British Empire to take any proactive measures to curb the famine. With his foresightedness, Rajan Mukherjee approaches the British government and convinces them to build a meter-gauge railway feeder system to connect Calcutta with its neighboring farming districts like Amta, Ranaghat, Barashat, Boshirhat, and Rishnanagar. In many countries, meter-gauge is primarily used for transportation in mines and construction sites. Rajan expands that concept to build the first feeder system in India. In 1897, Light Martin Railways opens its operation. Part of this railway later becomes the suburban local transit system in Calcutta. The Calcutta Port Trust is founded in 1870, and as part of the waterways connecting to the ocean for the freight movement, Howrah Bridge Act is passed in the year 1871. It empowers the Lieutenant Governor 
to have a bridge constructed over the Ganges with the government capital under the aegis of the port commissioners. Eventually, a contract is signed with Sir Bradford Leslie to construct a pontoon bridge and work commences. Different parts of the bridge are constructed in England and sent to Calcutta to be assembled together. However, the assembly of parts becomes a nightmare. The bridge opens to the public in 1874, but in the same year, it is considerably damaged by a devastating cyclone. Very soon, the bridge starts to prove inefficient to cater to the rapidly increasing load, and the port commissioner starts making plans for a new and improved bridge in 1905. 1905 is a rough year. Bengal is divided by the British Empire. Swadeshi movement is rocking Calcutta streets every day. The new bridge construction is not undertaken. In 1911, divided Bengal is reunited. Understanding Bengal is not under British control, the capital of India is shifted from Calcutta to New Delhi in 1912. Meanwhile, World War I is looming in Europe. The priority of British Empire shifts. Finally, in 1921, a committee of British high officials and expert engineers is formed to look into the construction of the Howrah Bridge under the chairmanship of a native Indian, Rajin Mukherjee. He presides over the committee and decides to build a suspension-type balanced cantilever bridge. In 1926, when the new Howrah Bridge Act is passed, it is the third longest cantilever bridge in the world. The design of the new Howrah Bridge is mind-blowing, as it does not contain even a single nut or bolt. Between 1905 and 1921, Rajan is not idle. In fact, he is busy with making a signature landmark which will soon become the icon of the city he was born in. In January 1901, the first Empress of India, Queen Victoria, passes away. Lord Curzon, the then Viceroy of India, wants a memorial in India for her. Tenders are floated. Martin and Company wins the construction work. The designer architect, Mr. Emerson, discusses the world's best memorial, the Taj Mahal, with Rajan. Rajan is exalted. His dream is coming true. In 1921, the Prince of Wales comes to Calcutta to inaugurate a splendid Indo-Gothic masterpiece, the Victoria Memorial. In 1922, Rajan Mukherjee is knighted by the British Empire for his immense contribution to the construction of the memorial. Sir Rajan Mukherjee is happy, but from the ever-growing demand of imported steel, he realizes the need of a steel revolution in India. In 1870, James Arskin founded Bengal Iron Works, the country's first steel plant in Kulti, India. This plant has been producing both iron and steel from 1875. Somewhere in the last decade of the 19th century, Martin and Company, under the leadership of Rajan Mukherjee, buys over the plant at Kulti. At the time, the world's steel production was merely around 5 million tons. In 1893, Swami Vivekananda influenced Jamshedji Tata in his pursuit of importing steel technology to India and blessed Jamshedji by saying, How wonderful it would be if we could combine the scientific and technological achievements of the West with the asceticism and humanism of India. In 1907, Tata Steel starts production. The possibility of another steel plant in the country is felt with disruption of supplies of iron and steel from Europe during the First World War. Byrne & Company introduces better metallurgical technology and promotes the Indian Iron and Steel Company at Burnpur in 1918. Sir Rajan Mukherjee joins hands in this development. In 1927, he acquires Burn and & Company and forms Martin Burn Limited and directs the focus of his Cambridge-educated son, Sir Birain Mukherjee, into developing ISCO and thus paving the path for the steel revolution in India. 
ISCO later merges with Bengal Iron Works. Today, after almost 100 years, Sir Rajan Mukherjee's vision is realized through Lakshmi Mittal, who raised in the same city, Calcutta, inherits the same passion for steel and has become the largest producer and controller of steel in the world. Meanwhile, Martin Byrne Limited went on a construction spree in India. Most of the known landmarks like Clubhouse of Eden Gardens, Grand Hotel Arcade, St. Xavier's College, Esplanade Mansion are built under this famous banner. Towards a later life, Sir Rajan personally gets more involved in protecting the spiritual wealth of India that Swami Vivekananda had mentioned. In 1932, Belur Mott was constructed under his watch. He passes the baton on to his able son, Sir Birhan Mukherjee, on May 15, 1936. The eminent industrialist, Sir Rajan Mukherjee, passes away, but the touch of his genius is spread all over Calcutta. His statue on the Victoria Memorial Garden reminds us of his unforgettable legacy.